We got a teaser today from the Warhammer community site about missions for Warhammer 40k 8th edition. And they go over uh, match play, narrative play, and open play. And uh, in the only war mission for the uh, for the open play, it's pretty interesting that you have an alternating deployment. Right now in 40k, what we have is I deploy all my forces, you deploy all your forces, and then we determine who goes first. Uh, in this only war open play, it mentions that you are able to do alternating deployment, and then whoever is the has the uh, lowest number of power uh, when you add up your power levels of each of the units gets uh, is the underdog, and the underdog chooses uh, who goes first. I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, that is something I think that is present in Sigmar. You guys that are veteran Sigmar players uh, can uh, can correct me on that. Uh, but the alternating deployment is how it used to be a long time ago before uh, we had the introduction of Seize the Initiative. So, you know, I don't know if they're telling us anything about that. Uh, but it's kind of, it's going to be neat to, you know, again, try to piece it all together from the clues that we get. Um, the, um, the missions, they go on to say that instead of just the, the three deployment types, they're going to give us uh, six accepted deployment types in the book. And I think that's important to have uh, more things like that in the book because, you know, as a mission designer and a tournament organizer and someone that goes to tournaments, uh, the missions... You want them uh, to, to be close to what is, is accepted in the uh, in the main rulebook uh, with the idea that if someone has never been to an event before, doesn't know what to expect, then they've, the common language that all the players have is the rulebook. And so having uh, something that's kind of tied to something that they may have, have had experience before they got to your event uh, with whatever, you know, wacky stuff that you want to have going on in your missions, that they've got some kind of base level of comfortability with it. So having more in the main rulebook, I think, is good. Um, what we do have, though, is them indicating that the Maelstrom deck, as we knew it, has been redesigned. And, and that's that's good. I've been an opponent of the Maelstrom missions, or, or having that be what decides your fates in tournaments, for a long time. Simply because I think it's a... When, once you add the random dice of matchups, so in the random dice, and everything else is just another random element that someone could been could have been on the wrong side of the luck train, you know, and so they could have a, a really bad experience or a lopsided experience based on all these kind of random uh, occurrences. Uh, and then the fact that some of the um, the deck, the, the missions you could draw out of the deck just had no relevance uh, to your army. And that was always one thing to me that's like, I know there's going to be that turn where I draw all the wrong things um, and that's going to cost me a big event that I traveled to. So again, that's just one of the reasons I've been an opponent of Maelstrom. Hearing that they have redesigned it, I believe with some of these types of concerns in mind, or in mind is very encouraging. And then uh, we got a stratagem uh, that anyone can have access to that says they can sub out one of the cards that they've drawn to hopefully get a better one. The drawback on this is that it's two command points, two copper pennies, uh, as uh, Ricky on the podcast uh, mentioned uh, that they'll, you know, I got I got one coming up pretty soon. We just recorded last night, so if you're into that kind of thing, hold tight. Uh, but it's it, two command points, and I think that we're going to see that the average of most armies don't have more than five or six command points on the competitive side. Again, I could be wrong. We know nothing of, you know, we haven't seen it all together. Uh, but I think that that two command points is going to be a lot. But still, if it's the difference in between. Um, winning an objective in the last round or losing the game, totally worth it. Completely worth it. I think it's great that we now, that every army will get that option. Um, so back to the missions themselves, there's going to be uh, six maps, six deployment maps, and then the, the 12 mission types between the Eternal War and the, uh, uh, the, the other types, I believe, that we're going to see that are there in the book uh, for us to draw and to make our own missions, to, to have some variety in our play. Uh, and I think it's pretty neat that they're going to have different ways that they uh, kind of attack uh, this, uh, you know, we want to see OPSEC anymore. Uh, so that that's the way they're approaching the how they deployment. Uh, probably something like CZ Initiative is going to be different, uh, and then I would imagine that Objective Secured is going to be something you know completely different now, uh, where it's going to have something to do with mo number of models, number of units, uh, battlefield roles, and whatnot. Um, kind of similar to what we've had, you know, scoring versus denial in the past. Maybe you know, I, you know, I don't know, uh, but just seeing this uh, have them having what looks like to be a lot more thought, and I shouldn't say a lot more thought, um, 
the considerations of us as people who like to have kind of clear victory conditions uh, put into a game, a clear and attainable victory conditions put into a game, seeing that uh, be thought about and included in this right out of the gate is encouraging. I think that the way to balance this game is, even in 7th edition, was through point limits and through mission design, and it seems like that's getting all a complete overhaul into something that's going to be a much more robust and a scalable competitive landscape. Anyway, if you thank you very much. Please uh, comment down below because this is something that's important to people and everyone's going to have their own opinions of this. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to hearing your thoughts.